We need, we need some masala. Yeah. On the, you were talking about the, the depth being 17 or 20. If a person is more sensitive to heat, say 105 is really hot for some people, uh, would you suggest that or adding another greenhouse on front to keep the main stake? Well, that, see, that's a, that's a good question because, see, that you're just getting into, everybody's getting into all the little tailoring tricks to tweak this. Uh, I would, uh, because of the economics of structure spanning 20 or 17 feet, I wouldn't go any deeper than 20. I would, in fact, stay 17. I would add the greenhouse, because not only is this greenhouse a buffer zone for keeping the cold from finding the internal living space, it also keeps the heat. And usually in the summer, the sun's higher, so this thing ends up blocking any sun from entering the first greenhouse and the living space. And when you block the sun, you're in shade. And you can still play the, the convection game out here. We put, green, we put skylights in out here. And if this greenhouse is in shade and this one's in sun, then you close these skylights, open these, pull the air through the whole damn thing, and you still got the convection engine, still got the cool air coming through the earth, and you got no sun. So you're playing with your sun angle and, uh, and we're trying to standardize a depth for structural and economic reasons. People will say, you know, why can't you go 30 feet with this? Well, then you got to change the whole structure. You can customize till you're blue in the face, but there's no real reason to do that because you can stay cool without going deep. Sometimes I would consider popping out a little earth room back on the back side that's uh, really an inner sanctum, you know. Yeah, it's a custom thing, but... Uh, you know, largely custom is is uh, just an additional cost. Yeah. Uh, we have intentions of bringing this technology to East Africa, and I believe the area where we operate may be the only area in the world where tires are actually a commodity. You can't find them. No, they they need to be. Um, what's that? They need to be an area commodity too. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. But uh, so I mean. What's this, what would be the best alternate to using tires for your mass? Earth. Just earth? Yeah, like uh, look at the, like we're talking, we've been talking for several years to different factions in Africa, so we've obviously been thinking of it and did some stuff in India and talking to more in India. And tires are, you know, they are in 90% of the planet a thing people want to get rid of, but where they aren't available or where they already use them for sandals and all kinds of other things, then you don't have to have them. Uh, we are, a, 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 an, and usually in Africa then, you're looking at not sub-zero freezing temperatures, you're looking at milder temperatures. Uh, what we have been leaning toward for some of our bills in Africa that may or may not happen, well, we're doing one in Swaziland, but that's going to be up in the mountains, so it's going to be tires. But uh, this, the wall around the building next door and the wall surrounding the tower out here is just glass bottles, could be plastic bottles, laid in mud, mud, sand, and straw. And so, the, again, it goes back to that uh, original conversation when I just started the second half here about the, the structure. These bottles and cans are simply a method of forming a cement or a mud wall. Take a look at the wall surrounding this building next door. It's a pretty strong wall. Yes, it is on one course of tires to get it up off the rain, but that could even be dealt with. Uh, so mud, we're talking about using mud and glass or plastic bottles. Now, it's my understanding that in Africa and I, my observation in India that plastic bottles are available by the billions because a lot of people drink bottled water. In all, you know, so you should be able to find bottles, if not bottles and cans. Uh, not at, not necessarily even aluminum cans, but these these beverage containers that do occur all over the globe can be used to form uh, mud, and you can do uh, what we did out here. You can't see it because it's covered now. Is we did the mud and bottle wall, and a, and a, we actually had a tire wall, and we filled the inner with pumice, and of course if pumice is not available, straw, grass, whatever. So you can, you can make the mud walls as a sandwich of insulation in between, and the insulation can be 
whatever you find. In Bolivia, we went out and got paja, you know, from the fields. Uh, so uh, the mass is the, the storage of temperature in a, in a climate like a lot of Africa is not going to be as serious because you're just looking for shelter and shade. And so then the thermal mass storage of temperature is not as important an issue and you can still use uh, the, the earth to build with. Yeah? Uh, do you have the opportunity to work with like any sites where micro hydro is available? Uh, in Scotland we had that and the, uh, the power system that I'm getting into tomorrow that we use that we pretty much have invented uh, does take power from wind, sun, micro hydro, uh, and just a subtle little stream or, 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 uh, or even a small river. Uh, if you've got it on your land, yeah, you can, you can put that into the, the kitty. Because uh, a lot of places don't have as much sun as us, so we have to combine wind and sun. And if you got, yeah, if you got water, no sun, then then the system will take it from wind, hydro, sun, uh, line grid, or a generator. In other words, it will take all of that and put it into your batteries, no matter what you can get your hands on. Was there a question over here? Yeah. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, you can get pretty big with it. We like to take them big enough, if you're going to go for that, to get trees, trees. citrus. Uh, the Phoenix has got citrus trees in it. Uh, so it's, it's a question of, if you get way, way out here, here here's, here's the, the answer. Uh, 10 feet is a good starting point. Then you get 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The further you get out there, the higher it has to get because here's your angle. You have to stay keeping the winter sun admitting. And so then the volume of it gets so big that if you got out there far enough, it would freeze. You know, it would get, you know, it's going to, the temper, the performance of it, you know, I like for hours at the Phoenix, which you'll see tomorrow, to, I don't like for it to get below 50, let's say. Reason being is because I got tilapia in there and the lethal temperature for tilapia in the water is 60 and we lost a batch due to that. So now we are tightening, we've tightened the whole thing up and put a solar heater on the tilapia pond and we're so far so good. Um, we're eating tilapia. But uh, uh, so anyway, the point is 10 feet is a good beginning, 11, 12, maybe okay. Then when you get out there bigger, you're just reducing its performance and uh, extending its cost. What about adding a fourth greenhouse? Well, I haven't come up against a situation that would m require that, but somewhere in Canada, I can imagine. You, you Canada? Uh -huh. No, but we eat only raw foods, and so we would like to grow trees for all year round, fruit, fruit yeah. trees for all year. Would that be possible? Yes, yeah, I would, say, I would say still you could do it in a third, because uh, you, 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 you look at the Phoenix. You haven't been to the Phoenix yet? Okay, you'll, you, this should answer some of that. There's nothing wrong with doing a fourth, uh, but I think in terms of, uh, I think three can give you, you know, if your house ends up being 80, 60, 80 feet long, and you got, you got a greenhouse, usually they have, uh, you got food in here, and you got food in here, and some of them even have food in here. Uh, you got three areas to grow food, and that's another cool thing about the Phoenix is there are so many different areas. You got all these little microclimates where salad grows best here, bananas grow best there. As a matter of fact, there should have been last night or today or something banana bread from the Phoenix. Just harvest a big fat bunch of bananas, and we always have bananas. People year round, we have bananas in all these buildings. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all year, one of the houses has got bananas year round, and you can, you can, some people say you can survive on bananas. And, uh, yeah. So you can have, uh, yeah, you could have bananas year round. I mean, the Phoenix is just scratching, the, it's, it's huge, and it's been going on for three or four years, but it's just beginning to scratch the surface of what we can produce. Uh, we're starting to go into layers, and I'm going to get into that tomorrow on the botanical cells with the growing, but, uh, uh, the, in citrus trees, we've got, uh, once you get citrus happening, uh, we got one of them that has lemons the size of grapefruits, and, uh, you know, you can, it's amazing how much food you can produce in your own home uh, while, you know, treating sewage at the same time.
Was there another question? Yeah. You mentioned it briefly. You'll probably talk about it much more. Have you ever used hydroponics as a system to grow food and, and use the dirty water? Well, our botanical cells, which I'll go into tomorrow, are sort of a cross between wetlands and hydroponics. Uh, so the, the, we have approached playing with hydro, hydroponics, but we're trying to go with, you know, uh, stay with simple aspects uh, that people are used to dealing with, which is planting plants in dirt. But they still have unlimited access to water. You can, you know, it's, in, a, in a way it is very much like hydroponics. Here we're just structuring the plants with dirt rather than uh, hanging them with some kind of structure. Yeah, yeah, we are not into playing with that that much. We don't. We want it to all be a, more of a natural process that we can. So you don't feed the plants in here at all. It's all just from. No, when you see the phoenix, all the phoenix is is the is the sewage system, uh, and the nutrients from that. Uh, you know, they, I'll go into how that works tomorrow. But that's actually what the thing looks like. The roots go down. They have access to water constantly. Uh, the what I've observed is that when you water plants with clear water, they grow. When you water them with gray water, they explode. You know, they just go crazy. And so I've seen plants do things that I never had seen them do before with gray water. So it's like they're happy. And they're stronger and more resistant to bugs and stuff like that. So there's a whole lot to go into on that conversation.